I was brought up in a very dysfunctional home, a family that was well, well known in my neighborhood for constant fight and violence. Um, you know, my family, they professed to be uh, Catholics, you know, back in the days, and, uh, but they didn't really practice, you know, Christianity. Uh, I said my family was with one foot in a Catholic church and one foot in the occult. So that's the home that I was brought up. I, my, uh, my uh, biological father, he left my mom when I was a little, little boy, little child. And uh, so uh, after a few years, my mother met my stepfather inside of a uh, occultic uh, house, uh, a witchcraft house, where she would go to find out about her future. She would go for guidance, you know, with familiar spirits. So this is the place that my mother met my stepfather. So, you know, they came together, they got married. And uh, and then from the very beginning, my stepfather didn't really accept me as his son. And uh, I remember as a young boy uh, growing up with, you know, my stepfather uh, coming home pretty much every day. He used to be a very addicted to alcohol. And so he used to go out with his f friends after work and come home, you know, very drunk and then uh, and come and, and beat my mom almost every day. I used to see my mom suffering, in, you know, in his hand. And for some reason, he would come after me to punish me for no reason. And uh, I remember he would put his finger in my face and tell me that I was not his son and that I was not his blood and that I was going to die on drugs. How did he punish you? Yeah, he would, uh, you know, put me on timeout all the time. He would yell, you know, at me all the time. Uh, you know, I think the most hurtful thing he used to do is to, you know, uh, to punish me is to tell me constantly that I was not his son, that was not his blood. That was a form of punishment, you know, to me. And I'm the oldest and I have two more, two younger brother and one sister. And so he was always, you know, loving on them, but kind of leaving me aside. How so, old were you when that started? Oh, uh, this, I remember five years of age, mm -hmm. six years of age, uh, into, you know, the, you know, the early memories is between five and six until I was, you know, youth, until uh, the age of uh, 16, 17. And then, you know, I became, you know, uh, a, re a rebellious young man and full of rage and to the point where he knew he could not, you know, mess with me anymore because I was a, you know, became a very violent young man. And, at, into, you know, at this point, uh, I was ready to fight with him and he was no longer healthy to fight me. And so he would, uh, you know, just leave me aside. But what did that look like in school? You being an angry oh, young so man. I mean, right. What was a typical day like for you at school? Uh, you know, for me, I don't have a lot of memories of my school because I, the only thing I remember, I, you know, I, uh, everything that I know that I've learned basically has come through the Holy Spirit because school for me was not a fun time. I was so mad. So, and the only reason why I liked to go to school was to play soccer. Uh, uh, that, you know, and you were a stellar soccer player. Yeah, I was a very good, you know, soccer player. And so I used to go to school to, you know, to play soccer. But besides, I didn't want to learn nothing. I used to be, you know, give all, you know, trouble all the time, you know, uh, you know, fight with, you know, with, uh, you know, with, with, uh, you know, my friends, always getting fights, always, you know, uh, getting in trouble. I was I was not suicidal, but I was very angry. I was a very young, uh, you know, angry young man. Uh, I, I thought about uh, you know killing others, but not killing myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Many times, and one of the things I had to be well, deliberate. Suicidal mindset. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, uh, with uh, you know going back to my stepfather. Uh, you know, uh, because I saw him so much, you know, every day, you know, beating up my mom pretty much, you know, and putting the finger in my face, telling me that was not his son. I grew up with so much anger, violence, and rage that that controlled my life. 
at the age of you know uh, 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 16, 17, at the, my, my number one passion was to kill my stepfather. I was planning to kill my stepfather. If it was not the hand of Jesus, if it was not God, okay, I, I know that I probably had ended his life. Now, you had an invite to a church service, right? to a youth group. To a youth group, yeah. How'd that go? How did, you know, how'd that yeah. come about? So, uh, that, that came from my uh, uh, younger brother. Uh, you know, he came to me one day, said, Fernando, let's go to this church was near my house it was like about 10 minutes walk uh walking distance to you know from my house and he uh, he told me that there was a lot of beautiful girls going to this church <laughs> and he said let's go let's see if we find a you know girl in this church i was like no out of all place i don't want to go to church because i you know my family grew up in the catholic church but they didn't really live the life and i i could not stand going to church. I never, never, you know, I went a few times to the Catholic church, but that was enough. I never liked church. I never had a, you know, relationship with the Lord. I didn't, you know, I, uh, so when he invited me to go to this church, uh, I, you know, I was like, no, I'm not going, you know, I don't need to go to church to see, you know, beautiful girls. And, uh, so long story short, he convinced me to go with them. And, uh, and this is, uh, you know, a, a, a charismatic Pentecostal church. So the first, for the first time in my life, I walked in into this church and I was just fighting. I can, I can remember to this day just the fear of, you know, walking into this church. We got to the church and they were singing Christian songs and, you know, worshiping. Now I know what it is. It was, you know, they were worshiping the Lord. And uh, something just came over me. Uh, the, the the peace and the love of God came upon me. It was like this mantle of just peace uh, came upon my life. And I was like, you know, I just felt so good in this place that uh, like I had never felt before. And uh, so that's just through worship. Just the, the worship. Yeah, that was during the worship, you know. And then, you know, I, I, I sat and, you know, way in the back. I didn't want nobody to talk to me. I didn't, I, I was, you know, very embarrassed. For some reason, I was embarrassed being inside of church. Mm -hmm. And, but I just, I was overtaken by this feeling, this, this, this presence of God's love. And, uh, so, you know, the, the services, you know, is over. We, you know, we leave the church and I cannot, stop thinking about this church it's like there's something in this place that i have never experienced in my life and so right there the lord got a hold of my heart and gave me the desire to continue to go back sunday after sunday now my brother never came back mm. after that day my brother got deeper into sin he got deeper into you know the, the lifestyle of sin and immorality and, but I kept going every Sunday and every every Saturday and every Sunday I, I went to that church. Now there's a worship service. Right. Where something very significant happened. Yes. And Supernatural so, happened. Supernatural, yeah. That is the Take us there. The power of God. That's when I had my first real encounter with the presence of God Almighty. And this is, you know, a, 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 a few months. You know, after uh, I, you know, went for the first time, now I'm going to church every Saturday, every Sunday. I'm excited about what the Lord is, is doing in my life. Uh, I had accepted Jesus, my Lord and Savior. I invited him to come into my life. And, uh, but I was still, uh, you know, bound up, uh, you know, uh, very angry, you know, bitter, uh, uh, um, you know, with a lot of forgiveness in my heart towards my stepfather. And, uh, so the Lord was changing me a uh, little bit. I could see that my life was no longer the same, but that was still a lot of work to be done in my life. And then, uh, I go to this, uh, uh to the service. Uh, and it's a Sunday night and the church is packed. And, um, and then, you know, it, this is a time where the Lord is really pouring out His Spirit in this church. This is a church, this church was on fire for God. It was, a you know, they were very strong in prayer and worship and just seeking the Lord. And there was a real outpouring of the presence of God. And so, you know, everybody, you know, is worshiping the Lord. Uh, you know, I remember, you know, uh, in that season that some of the, 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 the service, my 
pastor could not even perform the service. Mm. The service would begin with worship and would end in worship. Mm -hmm. My pastor could not even preach uh, the, the the message because uh, you know uh, people were just you know crying and all over the floor and just the glory of God you know just you know all over the people and and deliverance is taking place, healing is taking place. People are coming to Jesus. You know, uh, uh, drug dealers and the people that I knew very well. You know, uh, 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 that used to play soccer with me. People that were deeply involved. With, you know, on drugs, and that they were come to the church and getting set free. And so, you know, I begin to, you know, in one of those services, I begin to press into God, asking God, say, God, change my life. This thing about Christianity is real. Change my life. I want to see what happened in the Bible happening in my life. So change me. And as I kept pressing and drunk worship, I kept praying, I kept asking the Lord to, to deliver me. I didn't know what demons were, what deliverance was, but I just knew there was something in my life that I need. I need to be free. So you and prayed a deliverance prayer and didn't even know. I prayed a deliverance prayer. I asked the Lord <laughs> to deliver me. I prayed and I had no idea what I was doing. And I just asked the Lord to set me free, deliver me. Because I knew there was some anger, some violence inside mm -hmm. of me that didn't please the Lord. And so, you know, I... Close my eyes and I begin to pray. And all of a sudden, okay, with everybody worshiping, nobody touching me, I'm just closed my eyes and I begin to praise and to worship the Lord and asking Him to deliver me. All of a sudden, a hand starts choking me. Mm. I felt literally a hand choke, choking me. And I, I opened my eyes thinking that somebody was trying to fight me or something, you know. I opened my eyes. So it felt that physical. Uh, uh, that physical, really physical. I felt this hand, the invisible hand, just choking me. I opened my eyes to see if somebody, you know, was there, and there was nobody. Everybody's worshiping the Lord, crying with their hands raised to heaven, mm. praising God, and I'm, I feel there's a hand. Is it like a, this, a big hand, like a supernatural it, yeah, big it, hand? It, yeah, it's a yeah. supernatural big hand just choking me, and I... You know, and every second I'm, I, I'm losing my strength and it feels like that I'm going to pass out. Mm. And then I, I got to a point where I, I, I knew I was going to fall to the ground. And then I say, Jesus, when I say Jesus, it felt like a hundred pounds came out of me. Mm. I was instantly delivered. Now you say out of you. So things are literally. Oh, out I, of you. I, oh yes. It came up. I didn't vomit, but I but where did felt you feel leaving. Where did you feel leaving? I felt that inside of my belly there was just something just rising and coming out of me, right. especially my shoulder. Just the so weight just came out of me, and and I, you know, I didn't know what that was. I had no idea. You felt lighter. You I felt, felt lighter. I felt happy. I felt that there was just uh, fulfillment. I felt that the, 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 you know that something demonic had left me, mm. and so. And, uh, and then, you know, uh, and then I kept praising the Lord. He, you know, strengthened me. And, and, and that was a wonderful experience. Okay. What we want to know is, how'd you go from there to becoming a deliverance minister yourself? I mean, how did you stumble across and, and come? How did the Lord lead you into that ministry? I remember you telling me that there was something that happened on the streets right. of Brazil. Right. Where someone asked you to pray for, right. uh, I guess, a woman. Was that it? Yeah, it actually was a man. And, uh, uh, yeah, it was a man. Was And actually, right after that deliverance that took place in my life, something supernatural took place in my life. And I know, you know, now that I'm a minister, what, uh, that was a, uh, it was a revival. God revived everything that was dead inside of me came alive. And I began to pursue God like never before. And it changed your relationship with your stepdad. It's, it's, Can you tell us about that? Right, yeah. So, right after this deliverance, this encounter with the presence of the, of the Lord, with this deliverance, the first thing I heard, the audible voice of the Lord. And the Lord told me, now, 
Now, how did you hear that? Uh, tell us about the audible voice. How did yeah, you hear I, it? I, I just heard the you voice. Tell some detail on how that happened. Yeah, I, you know, after, the, you know, I received the deliverance, I just, I kept praying and I heard the voice, okay, of the Lord in my spirit, okay? I just heard this voice in the inside, mm -hmm. okay, testifying with my spirit. Uh, and the voice told me, now, go to your stepfather and ask him for forgiveness. Mm. It was a voice. I heard a voice in the inside telling me to go and to ask my my stepfather. This one that's been beating you since you were a little yeah. kid. Yeah, and and, and uh, you know, one thing that is good to mention is that I was never growing up, never able to look my stepfather in the eyes. This is how much I hate him. I I hate him so much that I was never able to look him in the eyes. Hmm. Because of the hatred that I had towards him. Now, I hear this voice telling me to go and to forgive him. The first thing that, that, that I said, okay, uh, to the Lord, I knew it was the Lord speaking in my spirit. The first thing I said, say, Lord, I haven't done nothing wrong to my stepfather. Why is it that I need to go to him to ask for forgiveness? And then I heard a voice say, just go. Hmm. And that was enough. See, I was no longer, that deliverance, that, that weight that came out of me, that was, now I know, that was the, uh, those are the powers, those evil spirits that used to control my life, and that couldn't, that used to control my emotions, that's control my, my will. I was free from those things. Now, I'm able to do what the Lord tells me to do. When a person is in captivity, when a person is bound up, they cannot do things because they're in captivity. Take us to that scene. You walk in the door and, and you see your stepdad. Right. What happened from there? Yeah, so, and, 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 and it's very funny, you know, I, I, you know, I hear the voice of the Lord tell me to go and I go because see, I had no more resistance. When I was full of demons, when those demons had a hold of my life, I there was such a resistance to do anything that pleased the Lord. Even after giving my life to Jesus, things were not easy. I was still mad with my stepfather. I was still bound up. Even going to church every Sunday, I was still under that influence. But now I'm free. I'm able to do things that I cannot do. So I went to my stepfather, and I remember I'm, you know, I'm thinking in my mind how I'm going to address this, what I'm going to say, and I'm just planning my mind. And then, uh, and then I walked into my house, and I see my my stepfather in the backyard. You know, say, Dad, I want to talk to you. And, and he, at that, this point, he's real skeptical. He took a step back because he knew that, you know, that I didn't like him. I said, what do you want? And I said, listen, uh, I just want to ask you for forgiveness. Just like they say, I, I'm here because I want to ask you for forgiveness. And, and he, you know, he just, I, I, he froze. He couldn't do nothing. He's, you know, he's just listening to me. Nothing, you know, he's not speaking nothing. And then I just kept going. I say, you know what? I went to church. I gave my life to Jesus. God delivered me. And, and I am free. I want to ask you to forgive me because I have a lot of resentment, a lot of, a lot of bitterness towards you. And I'm asking you, would you forgive me for all the hatred that I have in my heart towards you? And, you know, and as I'm speaking, all of a sudden I start crying. I start weeping like a child. I'm mm. just weeping, asking for forgiveness. And then he comes forward and he embraces me. He embraces me and he started crying with me and asking for forgiveness. Mm. And, the, and because of love, yeah. because the master of love, because I was able to go to him, that wall of division, that wall of separation, that wall that the Satan had built over the years, it came crumbling. That thing was destroyed because of love. And I embraced him, I hugged him, I asked for forgiveness. He asked me for forgiveness and God restored. Wow. God restored a relationship and right after that, a couple years after that, he died. Mm. And, uh, and I was able to lead him to the Lord. I was able to, you know, to pray for him. Praise God. And, uh, and, and, you know, in his funeral, I was the one, uh, that cried the most. I'm telling you, I placed the love in my heart that was never there. And so. Supernatural. Supernaturally. And then after this, you know, all these things, then, you know, I kept pressing to the Lord and, and, and the Lord spoke to me that I had a calling to the ministry. And so I got 
you know, more involved in the local church that I, you know, that I got saved, uh, began to go to the, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, got involved with the, the youth, uh, became, you know, involved in the leadership, and then I stepped into the evangelism team. Our church had the evangelist team where every Sunday they would go out to the streets. They will go out and pla passing, you know, a pamphlets and inviting people to come to the church. And I joined that group, and that's where that's where it led you into the deliverance ministry. That's where it led. Well, me how did that happen? Because I mean, how like you know, tell us that first initial step right. and that so, the Holy Spirit led you. Right. Everything began with in, our, in my local church. I got involved with you know with the evangelism team. Where we started going to the streets, okay, every weekend going out and passing out flyers, inviting people to come to the church. And I just, and the Lord kept stirring my heart, telling me that I had a call in my life. And then uh, my church began a school of ministry. They planted a school of ministry where they would, were training uh, uh, people uh, for the ministry, but also to, uh, world missions. And so I want to learn more about world mission. I would like to, you know, I, uh, the Lord placed this heart, a desire in my heart to learn about world mission and, you know, and mission and become a, a, you know, a missionary. I enrolled in this school and uh, for six months I learned in this school uh, about, you know, world missions and all this thing and I loved. But there's one class that I learned in this in this school that it really changed my life, and it was called it was a school it was a class called uh, uh, the School of uh, Urban Mission, how to become a missionary, how to become uh, you know a, a, a missionary in your city. This this uh, th th this class really is me because God placed in my heart now this desire to see transformation happening in my own city. Say, I want to see God transform my city, saving all the, you know, the drug dealers, saving all the prostitutes in my city. I want to see God transform in my city. So after the, you know, I finished the, you know, the school of ministry, then I went to another school of ministry where I learned to become a missionary in the street, where I began to learn more evangelism and strategies, how to win your city for Christ. And that's where... You know, my first deliverance experience uh, uh, happened. We were doing an open air, uh, uh, street preaching, uh, in Brazil called Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo city. Big city. Uh, big city. We were doing, uh, uh, street preaching, you know, and, and just, sh you know, speaking the love of Jesus, you know, just, you know, praying for people and, and, and talking about the love of Jesus. And, uh, and then, uh, this young man came in and, you know, to, uh, to receive prayer. And as I began to pray for him, uh, I didn't know nothing about deliverance and demons, you know, but I began to pray for him. And all of a sudden, this young man, he began to yell the top of his lung, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. And I'm not understanding what he's saying. He's talking to you? Yeah, the, 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 the guy is talking to me saying, that I'm going to kill him. No, not me, but the, the guy saying, I'm going to kill him. And then I'm, I asked the, the guy, who are you going to kill? And he kept saying, I'm going to kill him. And then the Lord gave him wisdom and revelation, say this is a demon that is speaking through him, saying that he's going to kill this, uh, the man. So the man that was demon possessed, uh, the, the, when, oh. the, the man that was demon possessed, I didn't know he was demon possessed, but he's, when, uh, who was saying that was gonna kill him was the demon. Oh, so the demon so, was speaking the, through him, saying so he's gonna kill himself. Right, yeah. so the demon was saying that he was gonna kill, you know, the guy. And so, you know, but God, he was in. Right, yeah. right, he was in. And I thought that was the, the guy was going to kill somebody else, that, right. you know, he had a fight with somebody. I don't know. And, and, but no, actually, it was a demon speaking to the man saying that he was, that demon was going to kill the man. And so God gave me the authority, you know, to cast out that evil spirit. I cast out that evil spirit from that man. What did you say? I just simple prayer. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of this man. And this man just got set free like that. What happened when you said And that? oh my goodness, when after I command that spirit to come out, okay, he just, you know, this thing came out of him, came back into his right sense. Mm. 
he was, you know, he was totally overtaking, right. and he's just in peace now, and he's looking at me with tears just running his face, and 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 then he gives me a big hug, and his face, the most amazing thing is that his face it changes right in front of me from this mad when he was screaming, yelling that he was gonna kill him, that the demon was on him. He had this mad, angry, red eyes. And then after he was delivered, he was in complete peace. And he was just mm. calm. And he gave me a hug. And he thanked me. And that changed my life. I was like, I want to see more of this happening. And so, uh, and it's fun because I never asked the Lord to get into deliverance ministry. I didn't know what deliverance ministry was. And I had the first experience Laying hands on somebody, praying for somebody, and God gave him the authority. After that, I was like, I know that more people need to be set free. And so I began to pray for people, just general prayer. And because of the anointing, people would manifest. But now I know they were under demonic powers. What and was so, your second opportunity to do the Yeah, the second time, I'll tell you, we were inside of a church. We were ministering. Actually, uh, I was with a group of, uh, of young people doing ministry in a, in a church. And, and then, uh, after we did the, you know, after we, we ministered to, to the con congregation, uh, praying for them, you know, uh, uh, we did an altar call, we prayed for them, and, uh, and then right at the end, uh, one of our, our, our prayer team came to me and said, Fernando, I've noticed that there was a young lady sitting in the back in a chair, and she is not okay. She, I, it seemed that there was something on her. Would you come and help me to pray for her? So I went, and when I, got to this girl, she was trembling, and she was having signs, okay, of demon possession, and she was trembling, she could not speak, uh, you know, uh, and, and then I laid my hands on her, and immediately, that demon manifested, and, and again, saying he was going to kill him, and then we found out that the girl, she was a uh, drug addicted, she was very addicted to drugs, and, uh, and so pray for her, and God delivered her. Mm. And uh, and that's how my ministry, you know, began. I Are you experiencing voices in your head, sleep paralysis, fits of uncontrollable anger, constant nightmares, overwhelming fear, anxiety, and panic attacks? If so, good news, you're in the right place. God wants you and your family free. Look, demons are real. They're on assignment to cause sicknesses, violence, crime, tragedies, mental illnesses, and even premature death. This book, Demon Mentality Exposed, will give you a deep understanding of the diabolical mentality of demons through the narrative of an experienced demon deliverance minister. Evangelist Rayford Johnson is a retired correctional counselor and author who counsels and ministers healing and demon deliverance at correctional facilities, the streets, online, YouTube, phone prayer line, conferences, and residential settings. Learn how to safeguard yourself and your loved ones from demonic oppression, possession, and curses through the power contained in God's Word, the Holy Bible. Thug Mentality Exposed is a groundbreaking book that offers an honest and insightful look at the inner workings of gangs and their members. Author and certified gang specialist Rayford Johnson draws from years of experience working in one of the nation's most violent adult youth correctional facilities and provides a unique window on the psychological and spiritual factors that lead individuals down the path of gang involvement. This book is not just another academic study of gang behavior. It's a raw and compelling account from someone who has been in the trenches, working directly with inmates and learning from their experiences. From the pressures of poverty and violence to the allure of power and status, Thug Mentality Exposed explores the complex motivations that drive young people into the thug life. Whether you're a concerned parent, a teacher, or simply someone who wants to better understand this important social issue, Thug Mentality Exposed is an essential read. With its powerful insights and compelling storytelling from the author and inmates themselves, this book will leave you with a deeper understanding and solutions to address thug culture. Order Thug Mentality Exposed now in paperback and Kindle. Introducing the powerful and captivating story of Ruben Palomares, a former LAPD cop who overcame incredible odds to find redemption. 
Follow his journey from the mean streets of East LA, through the ranks of his boxing career, and ultimately into law enforcement. But when tragedy strikes, Ruben's life takes a dark turn, leading him into a life of crime and despair. Yet despite facing brutal battles against unseen demonic forces, Ruben ultimately discovers a path to healing and deliverance through faith in his savior. Join us for this ultimate tale of redemption, as Ruben Palomares rises from the dark pits of despair to become a true hero in his own right. Order your copy today of Redemption of a LABD's Road Cop by author Rayford L. Johnson on Amazon in paperback and Kindle. Ever wondered why secret societies are secret? Why is it that an overwhelming majority of elite leaders in America, including those who've occupied the highest office, have belonged to an organization in the vast network of secret societies, whose rituals and teachings derived from the ancient mystery schools of Egypt and Babylon? Why is death the penalty for breaking a secret society oath? Why do they pay homage to pagan gods and goddesses? Why do many self-proclaimed Christians belong to these secret societies when their practices blatantly violate God's commandments, such as Exodus 20, 3, which states, Thou shalt have no other gods before me? And why don't most of their pastors say anything about it? Is there a secret motive behind the positive PR that many of these secret organizations receive for their good deeds, such as feeding programs, scholarships, volunteering, youth mentoring, etc., that even the lower-ranking members of these societies don't know about? Could today's network of these secret societies be the architects and workers of the Antichrist New World Order, a.k.a. Illuminati, as prophesied in the Holy Bible? These questions and more will be answered by author and evangelist Rayford L. Johnson, who has spent more than 20 years researching, writing, and teaching on the occult. Johnson has counseled and ministered demon deliverance prayers on many former members of the occult. Many of them have testified that they have been set free by the power of Jesus Christ from the spiritual torment and generational curses that the pagan rituals and oaths have unknowingly brought upon them and even their family through the spiritual legalities of breaking God's commandments. As God's Word tells us, it's the truth that makes you free. Get your copy of the Greek letter exposed today on Amazon in paperback and Kindle.